The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Nodulator Pro, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Bernard Tobin here at the Southwest Ag Conference here down in Ridgetown, joined now by uh, Dr. Sean Conley, University of Wisconsin-Madison, sir. Thanks for taking the time. You bet. Thank you. Now, you are the Wisconsin soybean specialist, state soybean specialist, and uh, one of the things you're working with a lot on is analytics and data, big data. And uh, it's interesting because Wisconsin, a lot in common with here in Ontario, so I think we can extrapolate from your data. Tell me about, I guess, what you're doing. 7,000 fields you've got in your database. You bet. So we will receive funding through the North Central Soybean Research Program to basically look at the factors that are minimizing, uh, to minimize yield Mm -hmm. gaps across the Midwest. And frankly, in short, yield gaps are the difference between what the genetic yield potential is, which in soybean is roughly 120 bushels per acre, and what the on-farm average is, which is 70. So basically, that's 70 bushels is the difference. And over the last four years, we've been able to extract uh, field level data from 7,000 farm fields and over 500,000 acres. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that allows us then to do is have this huge data set and, and really kind of broach this topic of big data and, and pull some of the information out the growers have on their farms. Yeah. Now, uh, what's interesting is that, as I mentioned earlier, a lot in common with uh, Ontario, and you, you've got Michigan data there as well and stuff like that. Um, Let's talk about some of your findings over that time. Um, a lot of no-till in Ontario, a lot of no-till in Wisconsin. Your data says a two-bushel advantage for tillage. Right, so what we see is I would expect there's about three, three TEDs that would line mm. up with what we would see in Ontario, what I expect and a, to And see. a TED is an area of, of, of research yes. point, right? Yes, thank you. So a TED yeah. is a technology extrapolation domain. Basically what that is, it's a, it's a unit of area that we would expect to uh, yield uh, similarly and response to and respond to certain management practices similarly yeah, okay right. so we were able to identify like these three TEDs that would be similar from Wisconsin to um, what we would see or expect to see in Ontario and what we found is in two of the three it really doesn't matter if you go no till or till the yields the same however in one of those TEDs we saw a two to three bushel yield advantage to tillage mm. and that's important for farmers to really kind of classify and figure out you know, I mean, two or three bushels is, is, a, big, is a big difference, especially, especially on soybean. So I think that really helps farmers give them some power to figure out where they need to be in terms of their tillage practices to maximize yield and productivity. Mm-hmm. A lot of information on fungicide. Um, and you've got a 6.5 bushel advantage for fungicide at R3. Right. Yeah, and, with, and again, what we were able to classify that in a couple of two of the three TEDs would be similar. It was interesting. We would see that response in an early planting. Mm-hmm. And then the other TED, it was late planted soybeans. And then one, we saw no response. So again, it comes down to this whole idea of the growers really need to kind of focus in on and pick those practices that work well on their farm. Just because it might work well 10 miles away, mm-hmm. they might be a different TED because they have different productivity, different weather environment, other you know soil types, things along those lines. So again, what this tells farmers is there are certain things out there that you can do that can greatly improve productivity. Right. 7.5 bushel advantage for drainage. So that was another thing, and again, I think that's something farmers already know. <laughs> I think we all know that you know soybeans don't like wet feet. Yep. Uh, but again, I think what this information allows us to do as farmers is have what I call as informed per- mm. pushback. Yeah. And that gives growers the data to basically go forward and know that I'm putting tile in. I'm going to get in this TED, 7.5 bushels yield advantage. They can figure out how long it's going to take to pay off that, 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 that putting that new tile in or putting, you know, replacing old yeah. tile that may be busted up. So, again, uh, what I'm really excited about this big data approach is that it really helps farmers make these cost-effective decisions that uh, approach and meet their bottom line and maximize both the yield and productivity for them on their own farms. Mm. Um, a lot of final point. A lot of discussion obviously about early planting in soybeans, and all your data adds up to a 0.4 or a 0.5 yield advantage bushel per day for a planting. Um, you're losing it every day after late April. Right. Yeah, that's pretty pretty amazing. And what we were able to see is across all the three of the TEDs that would be uh, what we would expect to see in Ontario, it's 0.4 to 0.5 bushels after roughly April 20th. Mm-hmm. So that tells you every 10 days you delay planting, you're losing four to five bushels. And that's free yield. 
I mean, you don't pay for yeah. anything. That's free yield. Yeah. You're just giving it away. And there's biological reasons for that. Basically, the earlier you plant, you get more. Um, basically, you get more pods per unit area, more mm -hmm. seeds per unit area, and it, I don't want to say it falls out of the sky, yeah. but literally, mm -hmm. it grows up from the ground. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. And what we're really trying to push growers to understand is, you know, two things. Number one, maybe if the soil's fit, and you're really not ready to plant corn, you know, you have an opportunity yeah. to go out and plant a few acres of soybean and try it. Um, and the other point we can make is, I know what we've seen is growers have typically have one planter, you know, mm -hmm. some of the smaller ones. And they plant corn first, and then they plant their soybeans. Well, this data allows us to, that farmers to figure out, okay, well, if it's 0.4 to 0.5 bushels per acre per day, can I afford to run two planters at the same time? Can I invest in another planter to do that? And then amateurize that over the life of that, that equipment and see if it pays for itself. And sub -tads, the answer is no. It doesn't really matter when you plant. But in sub -tads, you know, I've seen farmers like, they went out and bought a planter just because they think, well, I could pay for this in three years, and the life, you know, in the life span of this planter is ten years, and yeah. I'll have seven years of profit. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, the big job you have is to convince all the farmers to produce, to plant <laughs> corn after soybeans, right? Well, that's that's part of it. But what we've kind of shown is, over time, and again in Wisconsin, yeah. and I'm, I would think it would be similar to Ontario, is May first is almost always the optimal day if you had yeah. to pick one to plant so or plant field corn. So again, if you're out there and you can get a third of your acres of soybeans planted before you switch to corn, you know, try it and to try to take advantage of that that early yield potential and that and that greater yield gain. And again, I always encourage growers not to go crazy the first year. Yeah. <laughs> try it, see if it works on their farm, and then expand over time. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sean, great data, great analytics, great insights. Thanks so much. Thank you. If any growers have any other further questions, feel free to go to my webpage, yeah. which is www.coolbean.info, or follow me at Twitter, which is at BadgerBean. Mm -hmm. And all your research is on your website, right? Everything I do is posted on my website. Awesome. It's all open and public. Perfect. Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you.